Vintage Hunter, and I am a full-time reseller on eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, and Etsy. And this is a weekly what sold video for the week of May 6th through 12th. It's a Monday through a Sunday because that's how I mentally keep track of things. I'm working on a video to kind of show you how I do my bookkeeping, but I'll save that for another day. So let's go ahead and get on with what sold on eBay because that's what I'm focusing on. The other platforms are just simply filler. Where I make my money in this reselling job that I have, if you will, is through eBay. eBay is the platform that I focus solely on things when I'm sourcing. And the other platforms are just kind of where I just cross post. My main platform is eBay. And Poshmark, Mercari, and Etsy are just kind of where I can cross post things. Let's go ahead and let's get on with what sold for me for the week of May 12th, no, May 6th through the 12th. The first thing that I that we're gonna talk about that sold for me this week is this 1971 NHRA vintage jacket. Now this is a jacket from the National Hot Rod Racing Association from Indianapolis in 1971. Now when I paid $2 for this at a yard sale and I couldn't find any comps for it. It was in great condition. It had a couple little um, stains and there's little, some little, it had some issues. But it, it just was a really cool jacket. It had these patches here and also had this Coca-Cola. So it was a little bit of a cross collector item. It has this 1971 NHRA patch on it and it was a full zip and it had sort of like a Roman color. It was made by DeBonner in Kansas and you see it sold for $69.55. Now since I couldn't find any comps on this jacket, I went ahead and decided to add it to, to go ahead and throw it up as an auction and I believe I started this at $23. And within an hour of me posting it, it already got a bid for my asking price. When I do things at auction, I only will start the auction at what I'm okay with selling it for. I remember the days of being able to do an auction at 99 cents and you would always go way beyond what you would think. I, those days are, are, are not with us any longer, unfortunately. So uh, I was okay with selling this for $23 when I, when I got that first bid. And I never, it never dawned on me that it would sell for as much as it did. But am I going to be looking out for these NHRA vintage jackets? All right, so that was a great sale. This was also a good score. I bought this actually uh, the same weekend, but a different yard sale. This is a 1994 single stitch double-sided boys to men. Do you guys remember boys to men? Ugh, I loved boys to men. So this was the front of the shirt. And this was the back of the shirt. He, well, maybe. There we go. This was the back of the shirt. And it had this, the, the four artists here on the back. It, the tag was made, it was made, I've never heard of this brand, but it's Winterland Productions Worldwide. You can see it was a size large, 100% cotton, made in the USA. And I believe, I hope, well, I didn't get a picture of the single stitching. Normally, I'll take a picture of the sleeve to prove that it is a single stitch shirt. But you can see here it was dated 1994, Boys to Men Incorporated. So um, I went ahead and threw this up as an auction. Now, I had seen other comps for this shirt sell for $60, $70. So I was a little disappointed that it only sold for $35, $50, but I paid $2 for this shirt at a yard sale. So I was happy with that. It did get one bid at thirty-five fifty. Now I would I would definitely buy this again if I saw it again because that's a great profit margin there. I love finding vintage shirts. This is a light for you professional euphoric energy light system. I got this at the bins. Now on the box on the back of this box you can see right here it said well maybe if I can there we go. Needs power cord but can be run on batteries. So what I did, well, actually what my husband did is he went online and he paid, I believe, two, two or three ninety nine for the power cord. 
So we did sell this with, oh, that picture is very blurry. Wow. We did sell this with the power cord and it sold for $36.50. Uh, I probably paid maybe a dollar for this at the bin, so that was a good flip there as well. And this is basically um, like an, I don't want to say an energy light, but you plug it in and it makes you feel euphoric because of the, the light that's coming from it. So, whatever that's all about. But anyway, <laughs> this next thing, oh, I love these things. Now, I had these in the shop for a long time. And I think that I had like $15 on the set because this mid-century stuff just does not sell for me in my antique store. So I went ahead and grabbed them and threw them up thinking that they would sell on Etsy because I had them listed on Etsy as well. They didn't. They sold on eBay for $31 and the buyer did pay shipping. They were really cool. I'm not sure they were just made out of these. Oh, and they had a little bit of issues here. You can see on the corner here, there was a little bit of damage to that one book. And they were really, really neat. They were all hand carved in the ivory. Now, I couldn't tell, and I didn't, I, I, I can't tell if it was ivory or if it was bone on the tusks here. They did come out, so I was able to pull them out to pack them carefully so they wouldn't break, but oh my gosh, these were just really cool. All right, the next item, this sold within a day. It is a Lucky Brand tank top. It is a size medium. It was, it felt very linen-like, and it had pockets here. These were pockets here on the side. And it sold for $22.25, and the buyer paid for priority shipping. They requested priority shipping, and that's what I charged them. So this was a great find. I paid uh, $4.50 for this at a at Goodwill. And I always do well with Lucky Brands, so I always try to pick it up when I can get it for a good price. And just the feel of this, it felt, it was a very... Um, it just the fabric content felt very good and I believe it was just uh, it was a hundred percent polyester now you can see here in my listing I don't bombard with a ton of information I just stick to what the basic information is the size the measurements I give a little brief description if it has any embellishments the content uh, and then the condition and I always do provide next day shipping, so I do can, I do put that in my descriptions as well. I don't want to put tons of information in there, uh, and I'm happy to get back with the buyer if they request any more information. So that was a good profit there. Oh boy, okay, these Starbucks cups. This is kind of a, not really a debate, but my husband thinks that I shouldn't have bought them. And the squeaking is my dog squeaking her toy. So I apologize for the squeaking. I can get it away from her, I will. But this is a Starbucks cup. And we drove by Starbucks and they were restock we saw that they were restocking and we wanted to get the color changing cups. But sadly all they had were these marble cups. We did pay ten, I think ten fifty. We got three of them. My daughter wanted to keep one. And then I went ahead and put the other two up on eBay and so we sold this one for fifteen twenty-five. I would I put this one up as an auction. I have the other one listed, I think for twenty-five dollars. Buy it now. And it has some people watching it, but I'm probably gonna end up selling it for what I sold this for. So not a huge profit margin. These just aren't the as desirable as the color changing ones. The color changing ones have the straws, which I think make a big deal. So would not buy these again. Now I will buy the color changing ones if I could ever find them, but not going to purchase these again. Okay, this I got at a local, cons not a consignment store, a thrift store. It was brand new with tags. It is a Victoria Beckham for Target. Now if it was Victoria Beckham label, it would go for about twice this much, but this was Victoria Beckham by Target. And I'll see if I can, yeah, you can see there. There's a little Target. And you can see that in the store, this sold for $26. I sold it for $28.25. Uh, I did provide free shipping. It did ship first class, but they're not selling these in the store very more. 
anymore. And this was a good size. It was an extra large. It was a beautiful top with the scalloped edges here and the keyhole back. And I believe I pay $2.50 for this at a consignment. No, at a thrift store. Okay, next thing is, I, gosh, I just love buying vintage jackets. This one was a Fall City Beer Windbreaker. Now, I bought this jacket at the same yard sale that I bought the NHRA jacket from. I also have another jacket that's currently listed for sale that I got at this same yard sale as well. Um, Fall City Beer is a beer company that was uh, produced in, well, I think that it, I don't know if it still is or not, but it was in Louisville, Kentucky, which is about uh, two hours south of me. And this was actually a women's windbreaker. It was full zip. It had this really neat Fall City Beer embroidered patch with this gold uh, stitching on it. It was really nice. Uh, it had a few issues on, it had a couple, well, this is what the issue was. This was not the one that had the stains on it. The issues were that the zipper was kind of pulling apart from the seam. And I did list that in the listing. And it did have a couple little spots on it and a snag. And you can see that I took pictures. I always use a pencil or some sort of a pointer when I'm um, bringing or I'm pointing out a flaw just to make it easier. Just for example, right here, I didn't use a pencil and I should have, but you can see, I can see right here where the stitching was coming out. Maybe if, if it'll let me, there we go. You can see where the stitching was coming out. Now had I had a pencil here, it would, it would bring that easier to, to be seen by the customer because I don't want a customer to get this and then want to return it because it had flaws. And you can see here, um, the tag is still present, but the size and brand was missing. So there was no size, but I did take measurements. Just a brief description and uh, the what the features were. The seam is coming out along the zipper. There are a few small pin size spots in some areas. So you want to make sure that you're always explaining what the damage was. And this one sold. I couldn't find comps on it, so I went ahead and put it up at an auction. It sold, and I started it at nineteen twenty-five. It sold for nineteen twenty-five, and the buyer did pay shipping. And um, with these vintage jackets, I do want to have the buyer pay priority shipping, so there is insurance on it. All right. The next item now. I've had this for a while. I had it cross-posted on Mercari and uh, Poshmark. And it sold on eBay, as most things do for me. It was a Harley Davidson thermal. It, this, it had this embroidered logo on the chest, and it also had an embroidered logo here on the sleeve. This was from Columbus, Indiana. So when you're looking for Harley things, it really doesn't matter. Still go ahead and pick it up, even if it has a city on it because it people don't care or people are looking for certain cities or certain states and they're going to buy them anyway and this was a great size it was a 2xl it was in great condition you can see here i just keep to the basics um, i usually just cut and paste the title that i put in the listing and then the size measurements what color the fabric content and any um, condition. The third button was missing from the Henley. So you can see right there the third button was missing. But it still sold for $26.11 and I did provide free shipping on that. It did ship first class. Oh, this was a beautiful suit. This was an Oscar de la Renta suit that I paid $1.99 for at Goodwill. You can see here is the vintage label. So it was really, the pictures really didn't do justice for this shirt. It was a fabulous vintage bathing suit. And it was very flattering. You can see it had these this ruching here at the top. And it was a really pretty shirt. Or bathing suit. Here's the tag. It's a size 10. It was made in the USA. Uh, it was from the 1980s. And I sold it, and I, I also, I had this one cross-posted on e, on Mercari and Poshmark, because I kind of thought that this would sell on Poshmark, but it didn't. It sold on eBay, as most things do for me. And you can see here, I just keep with the basics. 
And it, this one was nice because it had the style number on the inside too, which is nice right here. You can see the style number there. Uh, so I was happy to see that one. That was a big profit margin there for me since I paid $1.99 for it. The next thing, and this is the back of the shirt because the the front of the shirt is kind of boring, so I went ahead and, and stuck with the graphic on the back. This sold for me within a day. And, and, and again, I had this cross posted on Poshmark as well. Uh, this Vineyard Vines pocket tee, it is a size large. And I sold it for $22.50. And the buyer did pay $7.35 for priority shipping. Sometimes the buyers do create uh, request priority shipping, so I don't know why, but they do. And again, just stuck with the basics in my description. There's no need to make it harder on yourself, honestly. This little guy is an owl that my dad found at a yard. Uh, yeah, I think I think he found it at a yard sale, either a yard sale or at an estate sale. Um, it was a cute. Oh, it was so cute. It was this little owl. I had this cross posted on Etsy as well. It was the the otter, artist is Ken Edwards, and it was a souvenir piece basically from Tonala, Mexico, uh, which these Mexican pottery souvenir pieces there are there is a collector's market for them, so don't pass them up when you see them at yard sales or at the thrift store. He was only like five inches tall. He was so cute, and you can see his body was just kind of he almost looked like a little lima bean. But his coloring was beautiful, and I believe, yes, this one was signed by the artist, Ken Edwards. You can see his K-E. So this one required a little bit of research before I posted it. Dad, I think he got this in a box full of other things, so he paid less than, probably less than a dollar for it. Um, and I went ahead and tried it as an auction, and within probably a couple hours, it got its first bid. So I think I started at four fifty. So it did get up to six dollars and thirty cents, and the buyer paid for priority shipping. It was so cute. Not a big profit margin there, but it does keep your store active. And I'm I'm a big proponent of um, wanting to keep my store active. So even the things that aren't going to make tons of money, if I get them for really really cheap, it's worth it to take a few couple shoot shoot off a couple pictures and throw it up. These sold within a few hours. They are um, American Eagle size 16 shorts. They're, I mean, they're just American Eagle shorts, but the size was great. It's a desirable size. It had this really pretty tribal um, pattern on them, and they sold for $17.25 with buyer paying shipping. And you can see, still just kept with a simple description took a picture of the tags and everything and they sold within an hour on eBay these sold within a couple days also I had these every, with, as with everything I have them cross posted to um, Poshmark and Mercari uh, these were life is good cargo shorts they were size 12 and um, these I've had since last year they were in a storage bag that I have to keep seasonal things and when I buy summer things in the winter time then I put them away and list them when it the season is right for them but they sold for fourteen dollars and twenty five cents buyer paid shipping oh this thing I've had forever this I got at Goodwill on half price day I think I paid two dollars for it and I don't know why I bought it. I was curious more than anything. This was just an AutoCAD 1994. It had the floppy disks in it. It had the serial number. You can see here it had all of the information that the person needed to make this work again. Uh, and someone really wanted this. And I, honestly, I had this forever. And it sold for $9.25. I think I actually took a best offer. I think I had it listed for ten fifty in it and I took a best offer at nine twenty five and the buyer did pay shipping for this. Yeah, just keep it simple. I just I just keep it simple, my listing simple. Oh now and would I buy this again? No, I would not buy this again. 
This little guy I had for a couple months. It was a Rainforest Cafe mug from 2000. It was this little, their little mascot, Cha-Cha. It was a really nice sized mug. I paid 69 cents for this mug at Goodwill. It had this cute little um, writing on the inside of it. It was in great condition. No flaws anywhere. See a bottom of the mug there. Now with mugs, I'll take a picture of the bottom, the inside, the rim, the back of the handle, and both sides of the mug. Actually, just try to get all sides of the mug. Uh, and this sold for $10.99, fire paid shipping. This was a heavier mug, so it did ship priority. Certain mugs I can get to ship first class, but not this one. Okay, these sold within a couple of days. They were Tommy Bahamas swim, men's swim trunks. They were size 2X. They were in great condition, and they sold for $20.40 and the buyer or no I this was um, free shipping I did take a best offer I had them listed at $25.50 and I took a best offer of $20.40 paid $1.99 for these at Goodwill these I also paid $1.99 for at Goodwill they are vintage Nautica uh, color block shorts swim trunks I'm sorry they sold for $11.40 and the buyer did pay shipping. And you can see there was one little spot here where the stitching was coming out just a little bit. I did, you know, mention that in the listing and they still sold. So don't always discount things that you see when you're out thrifting. If they just have a really cool look to them, if they have damage on them, or honestly, if you buy something and you don't realize that it had damage until you got it home, still try to still try to sell it because things still will sell with damage as long as you uh, mention that in the listing. Oh, Abu, I had him forever. I kind of probably should have held on to him until the movie was released, but I didn't. I had him listed for probably about three months and he finally sold. Uh, I did run a sale and he sold for, I had him listed for $19.25. He sold for $15.40. The buyer did pay shipping. And you can see here, he it was in great shape. He did have the little marker on him that Goodwill loves to put on their stuffed animals. I believe I paid $2.99 for him at Goodwill. He was so cute. He was in great condition. The ones with the tags still attached sold for about $30. So had he still had the tags, he would have been a lot better. This was a red line. You can see here, and I say red line because the tires have the red line around them. They're more collectible Hot Wheels. This was in a lot full of Hot, Hot Wheels that my husband and I had. This was a 1963 Studebaker. It was actually from 2009. And it sold for $12.74 and the buyer paid shipping. These little Kenzie jeans I've had forever and ever and ever. So I went ahead and threw them up as an auction. They sold for $7.50 and the buyer paid $8 for the flat rate shipping. Little classic football. Got him at the bins. He had one little bitty ding here on his screen. And I did list that in the listing. It did work was in working condition the buyer and it sold for on a sale I had it listed as on sale so I had it listed for $12.55 and it sold for $10.04 this next shirt I got at the bins it is a vintage lucky brand men's size small spell out and I sold it for $7.25 and the buyer paid shipping. Next item, this guy was so sun faded. I think he had been stuck in a win someone's window, but he finally sold. I just couldn't pass him up. He's just a little Ewok. He's so cute. And he was labeled Lucas Films, but I believe, yeah, these were sold at Walt Disney World. And he sold for $5.20 and the buyer paid shipping. Well, would not buy him again. LuLaRoe, this LuLaRoe shirt I had forever, took a bet, no, well, actually I threw this up as an auction because I had had it for so long and it finally sold for $6.99 and the buyer paid shipping. This is from the FabFitFun box. I believe it was the winter box. This smelled horrible. I thought it smelled like salad. It had a very oregano smell to it. It was body wash. And I finally took, 
I took a best offer. No, actually, I ran a sale. I had a sale. I had this listed for $6.25 since before Christmas, and I sold it for $5, and the buyer did pay shipping, and it just smelled horrible. <laughs> I just thought it smelled horrible, but somebody liked it, and they bought it, and I'm happy that they did because it's out of my house now. This was also in the FabFitFun spring box. It was a jump rope. And it was from, I think it was, yeah, Venus Williams Jump Rope. And I sold it for $5.99 buyer paid shipping. Honestly, I, I made my money back on the FabFitFun box. This is just movement in my shop. This last thing was a surprise. This is a speed sensor for a bicycle. We picked this up a few weekends ago at a yard sale. I think we paid $3 for it. And some of them were selling for $50 or so. So I went ahead and tried it at an auction. I started it at $25 and it got up. It, it had six bids and the winning bid was $36. And the buyer paid shipping. So this was, it was brand new and in the box and just three quick pictures. That's why I love this stuff so much because you can shoot pictures real quick. I mean, the, the list, the listing couldn't be any more simpler and it, we sold it for $36. So that was a good find and I will definitely be looking out for these little guys again. So those were my sales on eBay for the week of May 6th through 12th. My, I sold 28 items this past week and my net sales were $618. Here is the thing that's kind of proves my point with eBay. My wholesale, all of my sales for all three platforms for last week was... $679, which means I only sold $60.85 on all of the other platforms. So eBay, I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're selling on Poshmark and Poshmark is slow right now, which it is, then why not list on eBay? I, I, I don't understand what the, the, the reluctance is. eBay has always been, been very supportive of me. I know you've got wackadoo customers here now and then, but you do on all the platforms. I'll get off my so my soapbox about eBay, but it's just a platform that I really, really enjoy. And if you don't want to sell on eBay, you don't have to. You can keep selling on Poshmark. If you want to focus on just Etsy, just focus on Etsy. I hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more reselling content and make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you, what you thought was maybe a shocking sale to you or maybe even something that you thought, oh, you probably could have got a little bit more money out of that. I'm fine with that. I'm okay with saying, oh, I can't believe you only sold it for that because sometimes I can't believe I've only sold things for that too. But you take the good with the bad and sometimes you've got good sales and, and surprising sales and some days you have sales where you're like, oh man, but that's just the life of being a reseller. You just never know some days what, how good or bad your sales will be. But the surprises is what keeps us going. We like the surprise sales. So anyway, I hope that you like this video. And I will be back again next week with the What Sold. Hopefully, because it's not been so good this week. We'll see. <laughs>